Samantha Colosimo Testis, standing by on the line right now. First, Samantha, good morning. And I know a big a big rally coming up uh, coming up tonight. Um, and obviously, you are in support of uh, Chief Brooks here. Hey guys, good morning. How good are morning. you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> ah, you got a plan. Breakfast. So I had a, I had to let them say good morning as nice. well. Right. Um, yeah, definitely be at the rally today. We got to hope this weather holds off. It's like the uh, terrible Tuesdays of this weather going on. But, uh, yeah, I'll definitely be there. I'm speaking. Um, I'm actually looking forward to it. So, um, you know, we talked last week, and uh, and I actually wrote a story about it. And it was, should the people of Utica be, and I know this seems out there, but I don't think it is, should the people of Utica consider that this uh, this action by the mayor is impeachable? Um, well, I, I, and I'd I like your opinion on that. When, when I heard, um, you know, there was a petition going around it looking for the extension of term limits, they said people usually don't do extensions. They usually do recalls. And, um, you know, again, I think that we still haven't heard all the facts. We're, we're looking forward to a meeting on June 20th. Um, the mayor said he was going to be there. Um, so other than that, we really haven't heard from anybody. But, you know, the, the actions are terrible, number one. I mean, again, you look at the situation, 42 years of service. You're escorted out to your, a vehicle that isn't yours anymore. You can't even call for a ride home. I mean, it's not, yeah. you, you know, you think about it. You get almost got to laugh because it's all, you only Utica could something like this happen, you know? And hey, Because they took his cell phone and he had to, he would have to have asked to get a ride home, right? Uh, could had, I use the phone? He had to have somebody come to, pick him up. He come couldn't call his up. wife. He couldn't call for a ride home. He here's, had to here's, call somebody from City Hall. I mean, it's, 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 it's unimaginable that something like that could happen to someone yeah, you know, if you said it's sick, now he has to go through all that just to find a right home. Yeah. But if it is isn't sick, you know, still had a call for a right home, and yeah. it, it's really it's unimaginable after forty two years of service that something. So if uh, you know where uh, the mayor can get rid of anybody he wants, um, and he can get rid of somebody, and it can be insensitive, it can be disrespectful, it can be all of that stuff, and none of that is impeachable. However. If it is deemed that this is only over and and there is no smoking gun, and you guys find out that it's uh, that everything is out there on the table, and even the doctor, according to Chief Brooks, said that uh, the chief should consider retirement sometime in the near future, which he would term out in a year from September. By September of 2018, the chief would have to step down because of uh, of age limits. So if if it were to be found out. That uh, and the mayor cost the city a huge chunk of change. It ends up being sent to uh, Chief Brooks and all of these legal fees. That would be a waste, a ridiculous waste of taxpayer dollars because of a personal grudge. If it is determined that that's the case, to me, that's impeachable. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, uh, not for nothing, though. Bill, I mean, how long have we been talking about? There's been numerous things on numerous occasions that have been done. I mean, it, it literally came to literally displacing Chief Brooks out of his position for people to realize the things that have been going on in the city. I mean, you've heard from several people over the air throughout, you know, the past week about things that have been happening throughout the city. And, you know, it's finally to the point where it's like, okay, you know, is this is this a game changer? And, and the way people are thinking about, you know, what's going on with yeah. the administrator that's running the city. And yes, to me, I mean, if there's something that's there and just cause of, of what's going on in the area, and, and especially, you know, with this. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's something that I would look forward to. I mean, you know, there's I, I don't have a relationship with the mayor, and it's unfortunate. Um, you know, there's just been from the asphalt plant to this and that. I mean, there's just been numerous things that we haven't been on the same page, and it's, and yeah. like I said, it's unfortunate that, you know, the city's moving <laughs> forward, and it could be moving forward at, at a faster pace if everybody was on the same page. Samantha, you're saying that several people claim they've been laid off because – of personal grudges by this no, mayor? No, what I was just saying is numerous things throughout the area. I mean, okay. You okay. said you had Scott McNamara on the phone. I mean, there, oh, there's just been a number the of bomb. things that have happened throughout <clears throat> the yeah. city. I mean, it's not just, you know. Well, Scott layoff. McNamara coming on uh, the district attorney the other day and, and explaining that um, when he asked the mayor to come meet with him, the mayor's like, listen, you want a meeting, you meet me in my office. I'm not coming to you. Exactly. Uh, I mean, but then finding out that, he's, that he was driving around with a with a red light on his car and racing to crime scenes, and, and they tried to stop him from doing it, and he refused. I mean, what in the hell's going on here? I mean, uh, you know, when you look at I mean, Tony Pacenti made that announcement about the youth district. I mean, and he actually went to his office to go talk and meet with him, and he refused. I mean, there, like I said, there's numerous things that have been going on throughout this area that could be moving forward at a faster pace if everyone was on the yeah. same page. Yeah, okay.
you know. Uh, I mean, we've, I've been a council person for six years now, and he's never yeah. attended a council meeting. That's all, right. all I'm saying is that there there could be other things, like I said, that could be moving at a faster pace to help the city. That's okay. it. All right. You know? Uh, Andrew. I, I do no. understand that uh, usually with personnel matters, um, the council doesn't really get involved, correct me if I'm wrong, but have, at any point were you privy to the knowledge of the claim from Chief Brooks, even after the fact, the specific claim? I mean, they they came to the council. They really told us that they couldn't tell us anything. I mean, the, all the information that we found out was either through, you know, Chief Brooks or, you know, word of mouth. I mean, I actually I found out that Chief Brooks <clears throat> had been, you know, put on administrative leave on WKTV through breaking news. I actually thought something happened to him. So I ended up calling the chief's office, you know, talking to his secretaries to, to make sure that, Nothing actually physically happened to him, you know, and it was just, it was really mind boggling, you know, yeah. you're a council person that represents the city, like you're not, you're not going to get phone calls. I mean, <clears throat> you related to uh, Storm Stella, you know, here we are as council people, you have, you have hundreds of people calling you and you can't even get them an answer because you have no idea what's going on in the city. And it's unfortunate. And the same thing happened in this situation. I mean, like I said, I thought something actually happened to him. Yeah, all right. You know, I was a nervous wreck, you know, and I call, end up calling his office and finding out that. You know, he had been placed at administrative leave due to personal issues. I ended up talking to him on the phone that same day. So, you know, again, there's just, you know, a number of factors that went into that. And we haven't been privy to any information. Like I said, we have a meeting June 20th um, to talk with the mayor. And I don't know what the meeting's about. The council is not directly involved in personnel matters. What we're involved in is the complement of the police and fire department. So if they had to add a preliminary fire chief, we would be the ones to legislate that. Right. Are you um, going to be um, holding that? Are you going to be holding that council meeting in the mayor's office that night, or will you have it in your your usual chambers? Supposedly, it's supposed to be in our chambers. So you can. I mean, this All is, right. there's there's a first of money, so you everyone's can, invited. You you can um, you have the ability, I think, to force the uh, to the mayor to come and and answer questions, just like a, a senate. We, we do. We do. We do. We could do a subpoena, you know, and I would think a court procedure. I mean, but again, you're costing the taxpayers. No. Yeah. Okay. Funny. Right, I want to get somebody to get there. You know. Before we get into anything, the uh, See Through New York uh, has put out their list of uh, uh, municipal salaries, and I find this to be kind of interesting. At where would Utica fill in? And Rome? I have not found Rome on the list yet, um, as really? I've been making my way down. And there's, you know, obviously <laughs> a lot of employees in New York State, municipal employees, and their salaries. Right. right so right, right. where do you think Utica ranks in there um, when it comes to salaries, and which member? Do you feel makes the most amount of money when it comes to police and fire in in uh, in in Utica? Well, I mean, not only because I go through the budget, so I know. This. Um, I would assume that the police chief makes the uh, the most money out of. Well, the uh, in not the according. Department. This is 2016, so I'm going to throw some names at you. Um, okay. In 2016, the third highest play, paid municipal employee in the city of Utica, police and fire is Chief Brooks, uh, Russ Brooks, at one hundred and twenty okay. at one hundred and twenty four thousand. Now I've got to go yep. way up here, but he is not the highest. No, he's not. According to this, the second highest is David A. Mickel, Police and Fire, at one hundred and thirty thousand, mm-hmm. and um, then you go to I believe the top, and maybe I've missed one, but it's uh, James R. Holt Jr. at one hundred and thirty two thousand, uh, Police and Fire. That's not what they make in our books. I mean, that's what that's what overtime and whatnot. Right. This so. is what ends up getting. This is what ends up. The, the number is based on 2016 that includes right. overtime. So, right. Right. Uh, are those both firefighters uh, or is it fire and police? Are you sure? Who no, you? it's police. Okay, police. James Holt is uh, is in the police department. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now, with that said, uh, with overtime and everything included, uh, Jim Holt was the top. Uh, the 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 top employee in terms of salary for the city of Utica uh, with 132000 Now, where do you think that compares to other cities? You take a, a Syracuse or even a, a Binghamton, you would be surprised. We are not that uh, – we're, we're on the low side. Uh, numbers, numbers uh, when you go to even in Syracuse, numbers up in the range of one hundred and eighty to 200000 The top municipal uh, employee in New York State – William F. Witten, uh, police and fire from Glen Cove, makes made two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars last wow. year working for the city wow. of uh, Glen Cove. So, no, not for nothing. <clears throat> you know who you know was the top employee of New York State was um, the the. 
SUNY IT, the SUNY Pelly president yeah, that yeah. ended up having yeah, to get arrested for, yeah. for, for, for getting more money in his pocket. He was making I, like nine hundred something thousand dollars a year. But I get, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I guess my, my, my point is when you see the number <laughs> and everybody says, wow, I can't believe they're making that much money. It turns out when you compare it to the rest of the state. I mean, um, you know, the top employee in New York State making, median. making $120,000 more than uh, our top police official uh, has made, right. uh, including all the overtime. So I find it interesting. Right, anyway, right. tonight tonight is the uh, is the rally. It'll happen over at the uh, the park there, the Canal Park, the legendary yeah. Canal Park, which is where the asphalt plant was going to uh, Imagine be. Imagine that. We would be yeah. smelling asphalt by eating, while eating empanadas. <laughs> all right, 4 o'clock tonight, and you encourage everybody to come on over and, uh, and take oh, advantage, absolutely. right? I'm, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've been getting petitions, and no joke, I mean, out of all the petitions that I've got every other house that I've been to, what happened with Chief Brooks? Yeah. I mean, it's literally, people know about it, and, and they're upset. You know, we had a North Utica Association meeting a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, there was 60-something people in attendance, and, you know, all were angry. Yeah. You know, again, whether you had a personal issue with Chief Brooks or not, after 42 years of service, when you have somebody escorted out, you know, like that, I think that it really hits home to a lot of people. If it can happen to the chief of the, of the fire department, who else can it happen to? And I think that... You know, that's really what got a lot of people yeah. upset. All right, and, On top uh, of the fact that, you know, he he just he did his time, you know, <laughs> as a city official. And, yeah. you know, 9-11, I mean, people get really sensitive to that. And, you know, everyone forgets, uh, you know, what we went through as, as a nation yeah, during that no time. And for him to serve the city as a, as, a, as, a, as a fireman, you know, it really, it's it's, it's upsetting. And you're, uh, you are running for re-election. You do have an opponent, it seems. Yeah. Um, yep. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So and, I, I've been getting petitions. I've been out there, you know. I've got my kids with me running around like lunatics. <laughs> All right. You know, I, can, I can only continue to ask the people to support me like they have, you know, the past six years. And, you know, I enjoy doing what I do. And I, I, I legislate. I'm out in the community. And, I, you know, I don't know what the funniest thing I think out of all that I, when I became a council person, one thing I never knew that I could do was actually marry people. And I think I've married like 25 something. Oh, wow, really? I didn't in the past know that. Five years, yeah. How's your record, by the way? Are they still together? <laughs> They're actually, believe it or not, I have no divorces. All right. Myself. Well, there really? you go. <laughs> Good for you. It's yeah. only been six years, though. Like, so. so if you guys need to get married, I'm going to be in the city of Utica. Okay. All right, Samantha Colosimo Testa, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you later on today. Till later today, uh, starting at 4 o'clock for Chief Brooks.